Someone's cursing, my lord. Late night lunch. Someone's puffling, my lord. Late night lunch. Someone's growing, my lord. Late night lunch. Oh lord, late night lunch. This is a post-Watershed production. Good evening, you shining stars. Welcome to Late Night Large, where heliocentrism is rife. I am the greatest radio DJ in the known galaxy, Aaron Bliss. And next to me sits the man who claims Uranus, Saturn is Venus, a man who has his own orbit, Mike Large. Oh, you're an ass. You are a prick. Evening. The theme tonight, Mike, is... Planets. Yes, we're going to discuss the eight major planets of oh. our solar system. And we're going to mention Pluto Mike as well. Mike wants to have a quick shout out to Pluto. Because when I was at school, we were always taught there was nine. And, and <laughs> it was the same for you, Pluto. But apparently, they don't really cover that as much anymore because it's not a major planet. No, no respect for dwarves, is there? No. Well, let's start, Mike, by just. Have a word with us about what the planets used to mean to you when you were a kid, because I understand that it used to be used to be of interest to you. Yeah, I used to love the planets. I used to uh, used to love learning about them at school. I say used to because although there was a time when I could name all of the planets and pro and I think all of their moons as well, and, <laughs> and probably tell you something a little something about their orbits. That's impressive. Uh, yeah, because I, I, it used to interest me, so I. You know, as as you do, you you tend to store more information about stuff that interests you. Now I probably struggle to name you the planets in in the order. <laughs> in the correct order. Yeah, let alone um, tell you anything about them. Well, it's screwed up all those mnemonics, hasn't it, with Pluto being removed? It has, which is why I'm so keen for it to stay yeah. involved in some way. Pretty much anything you can think of. Maybe even, I don't know, neurosurgery. Uh, you know, there must be a way of just retaining you know visual elements or, or a visual um scene in your head that hooks to each stage of whatever you have to yeah. remember oh no doubt i mean they they work for most people don't they i'm sure the teachers of today will cook up some new mnemonics for the uh the now officially reclassified there probably country. are some they've done it already haven't they they've i'm sure they have i have to ask my little brother see what's going yeah, on yeah what, what's floating around the school scene <laughs> these days <laughs> see what his mnemonics are we all know that the eight systems in order of orbit from the sun, Mike, are... Eight, eight systems? Sorry, eight planets, rather. No, the eight systems. <laughs> you knobhead. Go on. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, he <laughs> he, and Neptune. And, of course, after that is Pluto. And the other dwarf planets, and the Mike. Other, give the other dwarf shout out as well. planets, but... We might get Pluto. them a passing mention. Pluto's the main dwarf planet. <laughs> the, the main dwarf. I've decided. The biggie dwarf. Yes. I always thought the planets, one of the reasons the planets are so cool is obviously they're named after Roman gods, which makes them sound very impressive. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Mercury was the Roman god of trade, thieves and travel, and is known for being a messenger god with the, the winged sandals and such. But Mercury, as a planet, Mike, w w I mean, have you got, do you remember anything, any sort of aspects of Mercury that you used to think were quite cool? Like I said, I'd struggled naming them then uh, <laughs> uh, not really ok well uh, did, did you closest. did you remember it's the smallest so I did it's... remember it was the smallest the closest and the smallest yeah that's about all I can remember of Mercury really ok uh, other fascinating facts teach me has the highest eccentricity of orbit which I believe means deviating from a perfect circle in its orbit oh uh, well of the major planets yeah, exactly, the the eight major planets. More. Do you know how much a, a Mercury year is? Any idea? I, uh, I, I don't think you have to be too intelligent to realise it's shorter uh, than an Earth year. Oh, yeah. 88 days? Ah, oh, you son of a... You clearly said that before. Well no, no, I just... Uh, <clears throat> I'm just amazing. Godlike, some may say. Yeah, it completes it in the equivalent 88 Earth days, but it completes three rotations on its axis for every two orbits. Well, it makes you realise sort of how well structured the Earth's uh, own sort of orbital system is. 
it appears as a morning star and an evening star, but it is much more difficult to see them from Venus. And it's almost certain that it doesn't have any life on it. Uh, I don't think it's surface it's geology or, or... And obviously, being so close to the sun, you'd have to be a pretty incredible being to survive those kind of temperatures. I went to Mercury once. And I bet you did. Yeah, I survived. What? Oh, did you? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, no, you tr- tried to find your own civilization, didn't you? But failed miserably. They couldn't keep up with you. That's it. That is uh, <laughs> there's a problem with with most women. Oh. <laughs> Mercury, <laughs> Mer- Mercury, I believe, is a male Roman god. Mercury, very cool planet, but far too close to the sun for our for our liking. Mercury is, of course, also the name for the chemical element, the only element that is, in fact, a liquid metal at room temperature which is quite ironic, considering you'd probably have to be made of liquid metal to be able to survive on Mercury. Mike, we're moving on to Venus. Venus, indeed. Venus, of course, named after the legendary goddess, the Roman goddess of love and beauty. Such a beautiful, beautiful name for a planet, and yet such a horrible, horrible (laughs) reality. Mike, it's, uh, it's said by some people, if you've ever looked at uh, photographs as in you know uh, astral um, space based kind of photography of the planet's surface I pretty pretty horrible it, it res- many people have said it resembles hell in that it's uh, extremely unbearably hot inhospitable and volcanic yes I believe hotter than mercury even though it's twice as far away uh, very, from the sun very good Mike and the other the other interesting thing about Venus is you wouldn't believe it from looking at it in the sky because Venus is almost completely coated in a thick blanket of clouds uh, which conceals its true nature until you've actually sent a, some kind of explorer onto the surface and see the horrible truth uh, it, can, it can have surface temperatures of over 460 degrees Celsius pretty warm and this is despite venus being known as uh, earth's sister planet mainly because it was believed that apparently at one time it would have had similar conditions to that of earth including oceans and it's pretty similar size yeah there's a strong belief that there, that there was surface water but basically its biosphere acts completely different to ours and it ex- had a hugely accelerated greenhouse effect where all of the water was evaporated and it, it didn't get chucked back at all it just generated this huge thick atmospheric layer of cloud uh, which stifled all this incredible heat in inside the planet so depending on what you believe kind of similar to what's happening to yeah, this planet that's true, but very extremely slowly. accelerated yeah. uh, other than the incredible heat of the planet which obviously would make it completely inhospitable to us the other problem with Venus's surface is Mike 92 times pretty, uh, atmospheric pressure oh yeah you get you get crushed you, you get crushed you'd be crushed that. like a tin can if, yeah if well you... a normal man <laughs> <laughs> sorry anyone other than Mike Large would be crushed like a tin can yeah I have, I've been to Venus as well the <laughs> the yeah the surface pressure uh, the got a equi- in town I'm sure you have the surface pressure is the equivalent to being about a kilometre under the surface of the ocean just to give you some kind of uh, reference there. You, you, it would be certain death. It's it, not a very nice death. It would be a horrible, either. horrible death. It's, it doesn't look in any way hospitable to human activity at all, and it's amazing that it may have once had oceans, to be quite frank. But then it's Which more... Which suggests that it may have once had life. There, there's a good possibility, obviously, because where there's water, there tends to be some kind of life. And obviously, eventually, a similar thing could end up happening to this planet. Uh, Who what knows? You, what do you, what a do you mean? Billion like? years time, Earth could be the next Venus. We could. Will, will, will there be another Earth? That's the that's the question. Maybe Mars will turn into Earth. <laughs> Mars will turn into Earth. We'll all hop. Hop onto Mars. Yeah. And save, then, save ourselves. Earth will turn into Venus, and everyone on Mars will be like, oh, Christ, I can't believe there was life on Earth. Look at it. It looks like hell. you got a point. And their atmosphere also is um, is 96.5% carbon dioxide, so in case you're wondering about the inhospitable heat, the crushing pressure, <laughs> you actually wouldn't even be able to breathe. So it's 
it, it, the thing is, it looks so beautiful if you sit for a telescope or whatever because of the blanket cloud cover. It looks white and milky. Uh, it's got a lovely name, but in reality, it's a dry desert scape with erupting volcanoes everywhere. It is hell. It's ugly. M- m- you might say like the uh, the goddess of love and beauty. Yeah. Gorgeous to look at originally, but underneath the surface, she hurts. She has yeah, like hell. <laughs> Venus is the only planet in the solar system to be named after a female figure. She's got it. Yeah, baby, she's got it. Of course, now we're talking about the planet that we all inhabit. Planet Earth. Mike, any opening thoughts? No. <laughs> no. On, on the third rock from the sun? Third rock from the sun, yeah. I just hope that we can uh, as a civilization find some way to to leave earth <laughs> <laughs> that's got to be the uh, long term project hasn't it because you'd hope so because we all know that the sun's about halfway to its life cycle and we're doing a pretty good job of destroying the planet ourselves but if we don't destroy it before then the the sun will yeah so it's interesting because the, you know there were talk there was been talk for many years probably since the 60s and probably previous to that about leaving the planet should it become or or be threatening to become uninhabitable and of course you know the suggestion was we'd all hop it to Mars to to live on Mars instead when Mars developed an atmosphere or we helped it along developing an atmosphere and of course Arnie proved that there is an atmosphere on Mars all you need to do is uh, get just to Mars <laughs> <laughs> and all you need to do is uh, activate the underground uh, ice melting technology mm. and, and there we go so it's, an inha- it's an inhabitable planet so I need to just go there like Arnie did I mean we're pretty similar me and Arnie I mean I could go and activate that and sort it out see you at the party Richter see you at the party Richter <laughs> Get your ass to Mars. Uh, shut up. So Earth, it's the densest and the fifth You're largest. The densest. <laughs> oh, very good. It's mm. the largest of the solar system's four terrestrial planets. Terrestrial being made mainly of rock, as opposed to gas giants like Jupiter. We, I'd hope that we all know the general beginnings of Earth, how we came about. To put it into context, basically so many incalculable coincidences crash together to form the the perfect conditions for life to begin and, and for us eventually to get here no God created Earth and us sorry of course <laughs> he created us from from the clay made the first man and woman you and uh, who else <laughs> me and uh, yeah <laughs> Me and whoever. It doesn't matter, does it, Mike? Me and that bird whose name I can't remember. Exactly. Just like most of them. Her name's not important. Uh, What's important is that I single-handedly populated the Earth. You are all my children. Anyway, Earth's crust is divided into several rigid segments or tectonic plates. Uh, About 71% of our surface is covered in saltwater oceans, uh, with the remainder consisting of continents and islands, which have together have many lakes and other sources of water that can contribute to the hydrosphere. Earth's poles are mostly covered with solid ice, the poles being <laughs> opposite ends of the planet that see the least sun uh, during the year, hence why they're the coldest. It interacts with other objects in space, especially the sun and moon. At present, Earth orbits the Sun once every 366.26 times it rotates about its own axis, which is equal to 365.26 solar days, or one side of real year. Earth's only known natural satellite, the Moon, which began orbiting it about 4.5 million years ago, provides ocean tides, stabilises the axial tilt, and gradually slows the planet's rotation. Anything else to add, Mike? No, other than like as much as you know I, I love the planet I want to be involved in leaving it I it's never going to happen in our lifetime but I want to go elsewhere I, I want to I, wanna I don't know about you but I'd like to send a few people into space I'm jealous yeah well yeah I'd like to send a few people With, to Venus without to be space suits, yeah. I'd love to tell a, yeah, tell a few people that they were moving to Mars and then just send them to Venus get jazz to Mars and then exactly. send them to Venus and watch them burn no but I, 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 
I'm quite envious of the future Urses that will potentially get to uh, go elsewhere and travel to different planets and start to colonise 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 them colonize and make them, slaves colonize. of the alien races yeah make slaves of the alien races um, no I'd, I'd like to think we could live in we come in peace you know yeah don't worry Mike I'm sure you'll be alive to see the uh, planet of the apes the earth is not a perfect sphere it's actually an oblate spheroid thanks to a slight equatorial bulge the difference between the equatorial and polar diameters Gravity actually changes across the surface of the Earth. You weigh 0.5% more at the poles than at the equator. This gravity disparity is largely due to that equatorial bulge creating non-uniform distances from points on the planet's surface to the centre of the Earth and to the fact that the Earth spins. The oceans, which obviously cover almost 71% of the Earth's surface, contain close to 20 million tonnes of gold. The Earth's atmosphere is composed of five main layers, and the higher up you go, the thinner the atmosphere gets. That's why 75% of the atmosphere's mass is in the troposphere, the lowest layer in the place where weather occurs. The atmosphere is responsible for auroras, which occur when solar wind particles hit atoms in the upper atmosphere of the Earth, creating beautiful displays of light. Red and blue auroras are caused by the excitation of nitrogen atoms, while green auroras and brownish-red auroras are from the excitation of oxygen. The Earth's tectonic plates, which collide with each other and are responsible for everything from earthquakes to mountains being formed, also play a vital role in maintaining the planet's carbon balances, thus allowing life to thrive. Uh, we're talking about Mars now. We're the other side of Earth, and Mars being a delicious chocolate bar, as well as the planet that is most likely for us to colonise should Earth become uninhabitable, probably due to our own actions. So Although not necessarily. Yes. But we won't dive into that. Yeah. And Mar uh, may I just say, Mike, can we please try and talk about this planet without referring Get to, to Mars. Total Recall? <laughs> no, I don't think we can. We can try, but yeah. I've already done it, so we failed. Oh. Mike, do you think Correct. Mars has a do you think Mars has a a harsh reputation? I mean let me let me put it this way. It's known as a bit of a hellish planet, and it's also named after the Roman god of war, which gives it an even more kind of hellish aura. It just makes it sound hard. Uh, yeah, and it's also known as the red planet, obviously, and red, as a planet goes, isn't particularly appealing, is it? No, but that's because of the iron oxide on the surface. <laughs> way, way, to read, way to read the autocue of Wikipedia, right? Yeah, so Mars, again a terrestrial planet with a with a thin atmosphere. The people that think that it may be an alternative planet that we could hop onto, it also has surface features reminiscent both of the impact craters of the moon and volcanoes, valleys, deserts, and polar ice caps of Earth. Yeah, so we could really what, get our ass to Mars. Uh, well, well, you never know. The yeah, lack of atmosphere currently. is a big problem. Do you think there'll ever come a time when mankind would be able to potentially set in motion a series of events that could spark an atmosphere on Mars. Yes. Without use of alien technology, a la Total yes. Recall. Yeah, we create our own. Yeah. I can, I can see it happening. Yeah, you, you think... Are you trying to say that mankind, who have obviously accomplished so much during their relatively short... Domin uh, dominion on Earth. Are you trying to tell me that man could feasibly restart a dead planet? Yes. <laughs> Definitely. Wow. How, how, like, you heard it here first. It, c it can't be. Oh, okay. Now I'm going to sound like a real dick. I was going to say. <laughs> I, I was going to say it can't be that hard. Obviously, it's not easy to do. Or we'd probably already have done it. What I, What I mean is like. The idea is fairly basic. I mean, we we know well, what we need, you and might, we you know what say, we need to do. Like it's just well, yeah, you might you, you, do it. you might mock, but then you know people mocked the idea maybe that we'd have something like electricity power in all of us, you know, many centuries ago. People probably mocked the idea that we could discover so much of the solar system. 
there are only a, a select few huge questions that man hasn't really been able to discover yet. I mean, you know, the genesis of all life, that's that's one thing we you know, we might never discover. I don't know, you might be right. Might I'm be always right. Definitely in reach. Liquid water can't exist on the surface of Mars. Yet. No, due, yeah, due to its low atmospheric pressure. Except at the lowest elevations for short periods. The two ice caps that are on Mars appear to largely be made of water. And if the volume of water ice in the south polar ice cap, if it was melted, would be sufficient to cover the entire planetary surface to a depth of 11 metres. There you go. That is a pretty huge polar ice cap. That is a pretty huge polar ice cap. So you can see how Mars is very much... It has potential. A potential looker, yeah, of a planet. Yeah. And, of course, it's where the idea of aliens is derived, really, Martians. Yeah, exactly. Little green men from Because that's, that's the other thing that, that mankind dreams of, isn't it? Not being alone in the solar system. Having another intelligent being be able to contact us. And Mars, realistically, would be that planet that would be most likely to harbour those kind of specimens, do you think? Some life. I mean, certainly nothing like humans. Not anymore. So you don't think intelligent beings? Do you, do you no. Th- so you think of well, it's like simple, maybe single-celled organisms, or yeah, we surely we know if it from the from what we've gathered, the intelligence we've gathered about Mars, yeah, we surely we'd yeah, know. Assume, we'd be able to see them there. Yeah, but that's assuming that you know we are as superior as we think we are. Well, anyway, they're choosing to stay hidden from us. Well, why not? If they're that, if if they they would be you know superior to us, that'd be what they do probably. Why well, they need to? But yeah, we're here, and what? Maybe they can tell the future, right? And maybe, all right, they've seen Total Recall. They know what happens. Maybe. I'd like to think so. <laughs> we'll be right back. A Mars a day helps you work, rest, and play. We're, well, we've gone through the terrestrial planets. We're now on to discover, d- to discussing even. The, it's easy for you to say. It, it was almost easy for me to say. The gas giants, Mike. The gas giants. We're going to discuss quick uh, in this section Jupiter and Saturn. Yes, as we have no song. No, Jupiter. I decided I don't. I don't own drops of Jupiter, but it's a bit dirty anyway. So we couldn't find a Jupiter-related song. So Jupiter, Mike, is. The uh, largest. It is muck impassive. <laughs> well said. It it's it's grotesquely huge. Jupiter. That's what she said. Oh, no. <laughs> very good. Anyway, oh. Jupiter is named after the Roman god of Jupiter. everything. The Roman god Jupiter of everything, which is the equivalent of God the Creator or Zeus in Greek mythology. Mike, being a gas giant with a mass one thousandth that of the sun but two and a half times the mass of all the other planets in the solar system combined what can you say about Jupiter that hasn't been said already oh so other than it's mucking fast here yes Uh, well it has that red spot thingy on it doesn't it the big old jobby what is that what is that about Uh, that that big jobby you know the big old jobby you Uh, know the one the big spot eye thing the, what the the black dot? Is no. that you know you, you s- big girl? The you're the planetary expert. Tell me. Was <laughs> I've forgotten? I used to, I used to know kind of what it was about. The big old red eye thingy, oh, swirly see, eye yeah. thing on. Is it? Isn't that is just that? a combination of the gases? The best known feature of Jupiter is the great red spot. Yeah, the one. Yeah. The one you didn't know what it was on about. Oh, it's a persistent anticyclonic storm. Duh. That, that is actually larger than Earth. The red spot's larger than Earth. Wow. There you go. That's it's a big old storm. That is a hell of a storm. And Jupiter is is a very beautiful planet. And is there a was I right in suggesting that there there was whispers of potential life? Oh, what? And Jupiter? That, yeah. Was did I read that about Jupiter? Possibility of life. Really? Now, not having a surface, obviously, it would be that they were discussing the potential of, uh, I think, sort of marine, kind of marine-based life, because I think there is known to be some water somewhere 
on Jupiter, which would make sense with all the gases colliding and what have you, but remember, Jupiter may have a surface somewhere, it's just not discernible at the moment, and it may have a core as well. Anyway, it's a, it's a mm. bit of a mystery. It's a, it's a really strange-looking planet, and like you say, it has that big red eye. Well, that's Saturn, Mike, because Saturn is absolutely, again, enormous, although it's slightly dwarfed by its big brother Jupiter. Mm, but it's a hell of a lot bigger than that. Yeah, it's named after the Roman god Saturn, who I believe was the god of agriculture and other things like that. And Indeed. Which, which might explain the fact that its, uh, its astronomical symbol represents uh, Saturn's sickle, which might explain you know, the, the appearance of the planet, because obviously Saturn is most well known for the rings. invisible rings around it. Mike, what do you know about these rings? I love a good ring, as you know. I heard you you love a big swollen ring, yeah. It has a ring system. Ring. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> the ring system no, consists of nine continuous main rings and three discontinuous arcs, composed mostly uh, mostly of ice particles with a small amount of rocky debris and dust. So. Stolen words straight out of my mouth. Oh, okay. It, th- are there lots of moons in there? Is that is that part of the uh, the rings? I believe Saturn has moons, but we didn't mention Jupiter's, did we? How many moons? Jupiter has like seven moons, I think. I seem to remember. Did, seven? Does one have an atmosphere? Did it say one had an atmosphere? It's got a. It's got a. What? Jupiter. Yeah, Jupiter. Yeah, it's got a big. Moons. It's got a big. One of them's. Oh, I wish I could remember their bloody names now. It's annoying. You know when you know something. Yeah. And then. You'll like, clear. You'll think about it next week. Yeah. It'll come, it'll, it'll come back to me. But yeah, it's uh, it's got some big old uh, big old moons. Well, uh, Saturn being a gas giant, it consists of hydrogen uh, mainly, which becomes a non-ideal liquid when the density is, is above it? a certain whatever. Yeah, yeah, but d- does it have moons as well? I'm sure... Or does it? Well, I'm Saturn? Bit... Yeah. Uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure... I'm uh, sure... Cloud layers, I'm sure uh, cloud pattern, magnetosphere, orbit rotation, planetary rings... Oh, moons of Saturn, there we go. Has at least 62 moons. Yeah. Fantastic. That's a lot 53 of, yeah, that's of which have formal names. And its largest Titan. being the Magnificent Titan. Comprises more than 90% of the mass in orbit around Saturn, including the rings. And it. Uh, oh, I, I have actually heard of all these moons. Yeah, Titan, Rhea, all very glorious Roman mytholo- mythological names. Indeed, indeed. Anyway, we better move on from. Uh, from those two gas giants because they as magnificent as they may be we are running a little short on time sadly for all those who believe in ultimate ambition Jupiter won't ever become a star enormous gravity creates heat and pressure inside a star so that atoms of hydrogen are fused together to create helium releasing heat in the process Jupiter sadly would need more than 70 times its current mass to stand any chance of igniting nuclear fusion. As for Saturn, there could be life, not on the planet, but on a nearby moon, Enceladus. NASA's Cassini spacecraft recently discovered ice geysers blasting out of Enceladus's southern pole. This means that some process is keeping the moon warm enough that water can remain a liquid underneath the surface. And whenever we find liquid water on Earth, for instance, we find life. We're heading into the, the home straight now, discussing the last two gas stroke ice giants, whatever you want to call them. Uranus. <laughs> uh, Uranus and Neptune. I don't really want to talk about Uranus, but... Uh, don't lie. <laughs> Uranus, of course, always mocked as the planet that, no matter how you pronounce it, is pretty embarrassing. You either pronounce it Uranus, in which you refer, yes. you refer to your ass, or Uranus, in which you refer to piss so whichever way you want to pronounce it it's a pretty filthy planet but uh it's a bit harsh anyway uranus is actually pretty <laughs> uranus is actually weird mike because it, weird. it's it's named after a greek god as opposed to a roman god like uh because uh like saturn and jupiter because i think the uh the roman equivalent is celus or, or something however you pronounce that um uranus was the father of uh, the equivalent to Saturn and uh, the go- uh, grandfather of the equivalent to Jupiter as well as being the son and husband of Gaia, Mother Earth 
That's pretty weird. Yeah, that's that's in, takes inbreeding to a new level, doesn't it? <laughs> Planetary scale. It's the first planet discovered by telescope. Did you know? I did not know. And it was generally mistaken for a star before then, mm. because uh, it's so bright in the sky. I think it's. Uh, I think it's like. I think it's like the brightest one. I'll Uranus. take your. I'll take your. Uh, I'll take your word for that. I'm pretty I? sure it is the brightest one. It's got 27 known moons. I, d- you, I knew I had moons. Do you remember that? I didn't remember how many moons. No. And the uh, atmospheric makeup is molecular hydrogen and helium mainly. So you'd have a good time on that planet. Uh, I, yeah, it's blue. It, it's cyan. I think it's it's described as cyan Uranus. And I think I I could make myself sound like a real twat now. But <laughs> go I, ahead, man. <laughs> hey, I do it every. Don't week. Know why I change the habit of a lifetime? No, I think. I remember why it looks so pretty in blue. Go on. Cyan. Uh, whatever. You know what you were, you were talking about, what it's made up of? Yeah. Like hydrogen. Yeah. And what else is it? He, uh, molecular hydrogen <coughs> and helium, mainly. I think also it contains a lot of methane. Oh, uh, yeah. Which, I think if I right, remember, I... Refle- absorbs like red light and reflects the blue light, which I is think, why it appears. I think, you're, yeah, no, I, I think I did read that as well. I think you're right there. So, yeah, but yeah. again, it's it's no more cyan. Neptune is the blue one. Well, whatever, man, but you know what I'm saying. The, blue the other really interesting color. thing it's about... It's windy. <laughs> yes, very it's windy. windy. Not as windy as Neptune, though, I seem yeah. to remember. Yeah, I remember hearing Uranus was windy. <laughs> <laughs> I was um, going to make a, a joke like that, but yeah. You but one, yeah, one more fascinating fact about Uranus is also... Do you know the uh, the surface temperature is very close to absolute zero? Negative 224 degrees... Celsius. It's pretty chilly. It's only about 50 degrees off absolute zero. I'm going to take a coat. <laughs> so Neptune, Mike, finally Neptune, the last actual planet in the solar system. Named after the god, the god of, of the, the sea. Yeah, or Poseidon, obviously, is the, the equivalent in Greek. Aye. Again, 80% hydrogen, 90% helium atmospheric. 13 moons. Uh, like Uranus, like you just said, well done, Mike. Absorption of red light by methane, mainly. Boom. Con- contributes to how how blue it is. How gorgeously deep blue. Just a pretty face. Uh, and uh, I'm not sure if it's the only planet to be this, but it's actually completely invisible to the naked eye, Neptune. It's not possible to see without telescopic assistance. Which is a shame, because it's pretty. It's a very beautiful planet. And again, it has rings, like all the other gas giants, I mm. think. Oh, I forgot to mention about Uranus's rings. Yeah. It's, it does, it's not... Okay. Upright... Like the planets on its side, so the rings go like if you imagine looking at, at Saturn, obviously its rings are on a bit of a tilt, but they go generally from left to right. It goes from like up to down as you would look at it. Yeah. Like th- like, like a hamburger with yeah. a filling coming out, yeah. But obviously like the other way, Uranus. And I think that's it's the opposite way. It's yeah. I they think it I I think it's something to do with uh, maybe colliding with something. I think it's been knocked off its axis. Okay. Forever and ever. Oh, no, yeah, another thing we forgot to mention as well. Earth is the only planet not to be named after Greek or Roman mythological figures. So there you go. Earth mm. is special in more ways than one. Yeah. Uh, Mike, uh, it's been it's been a fascinating discussion on the planets. Indeedy. I've enjoyed it, and I've learnt a lot, that's, to be honest. That's what she said. <laughs> you wish. A day on Uranus is only about 17 hours, but the tilt of it works out so that one pole or the other is usually pointed towards the sun. This means that a day at the north pole of Uranus lasts half of a Uranian year, which is 84 Earth years. So if you could stand on the north pole of Uranus, you would see the sunrise in the sky, circle around for 42 years, and finally dip down below the horizon. Followed, of course, by 42 years of darkness. As for the dreamlike Neptune, if you thought that Neptune itself was cold, which it is, its moon Triton is about as cold as you can imagine. It's the largest of Neptune's 13 moons and the only one with enough mass and gravity to put itself into a sphere. In fact, it's the seventh largest moon in the whole of the solar system. Temperatures on the surface of Triton can dip down to only 38 degrees Kelvin or negative 235 degrees Celsius. I shall go to uh, to sleep tonight dreaming of Uranus. <laughs> yeah, and I'll I'll go to sleep dreaming of your Venus. 
uh, before we start plumbing depths that oh. are lower than Uranus's temperature, I know we'll get deep. Yeah, <clears throat> we'll say good night. So from the from the marvels of the cosmos, late night large bids you good night. Oh, Pluto. Pluto as well. Bloody Pluto. Yes, Pluto, dwarf planet, but Mike loves it.